Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor, specializing in the boreal forest. Today we're sort of going to cover the bush method of brewing coffee. Generally, you can use the cheapest coffee you have available, and if you brew it the way we're demonstrating here and explaining how it turns out to be the nicest tasting coffee, and people finally learn how coffee should be brewed. We're going to light our fire and get it going so that we don't take too long in the business of brewing coffee. Here we're using the zirconium rod that uh, is the most invincible, powerful method of lighting a fire. One stroke and there it goes. Notice the smoke signal because of the large quantity of old man's beard in there. Then we lay finger thick sticks on our fire. The fire base is the crosswood fire. Three sticks laid down and then three more laid at an angle with a spacing of four fingers so that as the fire burns the burning material falls between the logs and they catch. We start with finger thick. May range today we don't really have to go as far as wrist thick. And our fire is now fairly bulky. It'll burn down in a moment. And while it's burning down, we'll talk about the chemistry of brewing coffee. Uh, here we have a pot. Now, size of pot matters sometimes. The issue with the coffee is that the air that's entrenched in the water, when it starts to reach a boil, there's a big foaming action. And if I don't leave very much space between the water in the top of the pot, you'll boil off a lot of the coffee grounds. Now you can make strong coffee and add water to it. You can't make weak coffee stronger, but you can make strong coffee weaker. We measure out approximately a tablespoon of coffee for every cup or so that is the final intended cup because we might make rather strong coffee with such a small pot and then we can probably top it off right to the very top. We carefully pour the coffee in the pot, not stirring it in, letting the boiling process incorporate the grounds into the, into the water. Now, if you watch your water and you know how long to let it boil, you will extract the material out of the coffee that makes coffee what it is, enjoyable and, and so on. Uh, if you boil it too long, you'll extract bitter principles and then you find that the coffee is not as enjoyable. We have a suspension system here that allows us to vary the height. We have a height here that we will find will be suspended without jeopardizing the pot. We get it over the fire right where we want it. And then we lower it down till it's touching the glowing material, which is about there. We may speed up the fire by putting fine twigs under the pot. But while the pot is over, we watch it with great vigilance. The water we start with is cold usually to get the best effect. Sometimes when the water must be boiled for safety reasons. We start with hotter water, but the ideal condition is to start with cold if you possibly can. I'm watching the um, ground, coffee grounds sitting on top of the water. As the water heats, you can see more of the grounds become saturated. And as the um, water gets hotter and hotter and finally reaches the rolling boil, we have to start our timing process. Right now, if a person was looking into the pot, there isn't that much. There's just a few little islands of dry coffee grounds. They're all starting to soak in the water. The edges of the pot, of course, boil a little faster. And I am vigilant to try not to boil over our coffee 
in the sense that if I allow that to happen, a lot of the coffee could exit the pot before it's brewed. So we watch very carefully and we can see the changes occurring. People who are experienced in brewing coffee will uh, uh, know what the signs are to look for. We could almost lower our coffee one more notch. Generally in a water boiling competition, if the bottom of your pot is touching the glowing coals, that's where you are apt to win the competition. If it's suspended any height, you just generally don't have that direct contact you might like with the air. We might have a, a, a better effect. Now, as I watch the grounds start to incorporate and react, a uh, light brown color starts to develop, and I might grab the pot and raise it a number of notches momentarily till the oxygen boils off. And after the oxygen is boiled off, then you will find that the boiling will settle down and not overflow your pot. But if you suspect you're going to overflow, put less water in the pot to start with, and then dilute your coffee after it's brewed. The uh, situation is that you can probably use a third of the volume, brew it, and then increase it to two-thirds more for a large group of people. So you find that you want to get the most for your money by not losing too much of your coffee and uh, um, over, overflowing. And we'll doctor up the flames underneath the pot with the sticks that are left over. When you're picking up these sticks, Make sure you don't grab the ones that have resin, molten resin on them. That gives you a kind of a nasty burn. Now avoid those, be vigilant. The coffee should be brewed in another few moments. Over here we have the pile up of twigs that don't want to burn because the oxygen can't reach them because of the intensity of the fire and, and so on. Sometimes people have small, now I see kind of lines developing in the pot uh, where the boiling water is starting to come out other than along the edges of the pot. And we can see that the water is getting hotter and hotter. And we, as I, I want to point out that we have not stirred the coffee. We avoided stirring. The stirring that we want to achieve has to be done by the boiling process. And moments away from boiling, add more fine fuel so that. We don't waste any time. Now you can tell the boiling is imminent because of the steam that is beginning to come off the top. The uh, coffee is turning from a medium brown to a light brown where it's being bubbling up. Now this coffee has a very marvelous taste and we have found that the inexpensive brands of coffee uh, are very effective in producing good tasting coffee and this coffee tends to create the euphoric effect far better as far as I am concerned than the normal brewed coffee that's uh, put through filters and so on. I think you get a much more concentrated, uh, a much greater concentration of the caffeine or the essentials that make coffee what it is or why we choose to drink it. We can shift over a little bit to the where the flames are. 
Now once the coffee boils, there's a certain point at which you begin your timing. <sighs> Trying to get the flames under the bottom of the pot more. There's nothing like a good, properly made cup of coffee first thing in the morning. In fact, if you don't eat breakfast, then you will find that that coffee could be very important in uh, dealing with your hunger pangs and so on. There's a continual predictable change to the surface of the, of the coffee. I'm watching that I might have to take that off the fire. Boiling is about to start. There, it's boiling. Will it overflow today? Well, our heating has been so gradual that we don't have that sudden uh, foaming that overflows. We see, now we see uh, coffee grounds that are riding on top of the foam. And that foam is being cycled into the coffee. almost overflowing but it doesn't which is a good sign that we have left enough room I see no more grounds and I see the coffee really boiling at this point I might reduce the boiling by going up a notch there and I time one minute or thereabouts so we have 15 seconds now if you Boil it more than a minute, perhaps a minute and a half. The bitter principles that are in the grounds will be uh, drawn out into the water. Half a minute. And I'm watching, it just has to boil. Not violently, just a little. It could probably even boil if I lifted another notch. <coughs> About another 15 seconds. And the coffee is brewed. We should maybe when you're cooking around the fire deal, you have leather mitts. There we go, one minute at a boil after the grounds are no longer riding on the coffee in case that is hot. Now we can let the pot sit for let's say five minutes and all the grounds will settle. Some people will beat on the pot and the vibration will speed up the settling process and some people will pour water now this coffee is kind of concentrated so we would likely want to dilute it and if you boil or pour the water from a height that instantly settles the grounds and the dipper, in our tradition, dippers are always have this. Anything that is sort of bent at the handle so that it doesn't fall into the pot is never touches anyone's lips. If I do this, I will find that as I look at it or I pour it off, no grounds are found in the pot, in the dipper. The coffee is ready to, uh, to consume. Now, if you have canned milk and brown sugar, which are my favorite additives. Enough brown sugar to make the coffee less bitter and canned milk. And I am in the lap of luxury. I am experiencing ecstasy first thing in the morning. <laughs>